Hey, my name is Dave. I'm out here doing geothermal slinkies today and I wanted to share some of what I've learned. I know lots of people have described how to make these tables three foot wide out of a full sheet of plywood two by four is bolted on each side. Notice that the other side of mine has got this lip so that the slinkies don't come out while I'm working on them. This was a huge time saver for me. Before that they were flopping all over the place. Notice the uh, side I'm working on has got a couple of small pieces bolted to it with spaces between so I can get in there and do the uh, zip tying. See this huge kink that I've got in the tubing. I want to show you how to get those out because I was flipping these coils upside down over, turning them, twisting them yesterday trying to figure it out. The trick is you just have to keep rotating it in the direction you're working. So in my case it's counterclockwise. Just rotate this coil and this kink will come all the way out. It'll just keep rotating it and we'll get that kink flat. You can see I'm rotating it counterclockwise so that the line is coming off in the direction that I'm working. That and if I just keep rotating that, that kink's going to come out and it's going to lay nice and flat. Just keep rotating that. Getting the uh, cable off the spool is a combination of rotating it and just pulling loops off the top of the spool. But since the spool is not the same size as the three foot wide table I'm using, it, uh, it gets all kinked up if you don't rotate occasionally. Now we're going to line up a spool with the marks on the board. Their marks are three feet wide. The board is three feet wide. So I'm going to get nice three foot circles and I'm going to use zip ties to tie them together. Some people have described using wires. I like zip ties better. They don't uh, they don't cut into the cut into the tubing. And a couple of times I've been pulling on things, pulling on them, and the zip ties have just snapped, which is great because you know they're like a little safety thing. If the zip tie snaps, it meant I was pulling too hard, and rather that snap than have anything bad happen to my uh, my ground loops. A lot of people, in fact most people, advocate overlapping the loops so that you're making a new loop every 18 inches, every foot and a half. I'm putting the loops next to each other. I'm making each loop be three feet wide and I can do that because I've got room for the 100 foot trenches that we need in order to do, to do that. If you're going to overlap them by 18 inches and put loops on top of loops like 90% of the people do, you can fit the same amount of ground loop into 66 foot trench, but that just means you've only got 66 feet of trench to uh, dissipate all the heat and instead of 100 feet of trench. So you uh, overlap the slinkies by as much as you have room for. If you've got room for just trenching in straight pipe out and back, 300 feet each direction, then that's fantastic too. But uh, I've got the room for it. I just didn't want to do that much digging. So I decided that 100 foot trenches were a good way to go. That I'd get a lot better performance than if I did uh, 66 foot trenches. I also want you to see I've left 100 plus feet of ground loop here at the end of the slinky unattached. This will be the far end. Um, the end farthest from the uh, heat pump and I haven't attached it to the side of the slinky like everybody else does because if you do that you'd just be mixing your hot and your cold together and that just seems silly to me. So I'm going to bury the slinky eight feet deep and then I'm going to put two feet of dirt in and then that remainder of the uh, loop is going to be the outgoing pipe and I'm going to get a free hundred feet of heat exchange off of that pipe before it even enters the return loop.